Fantasy. You're listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What's going on, FA Nation? John Bemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Better Baseball MLB DFS Playbook Podcast here. Our first look at Friday's 13-game main slate. James, 13 games. Uh, we've been uh, you know, looking for some of these larger slates. We had just four games on Thursday, which made it pretty difficult to uh, break down and build lineups here when we had uh, you know, so many, uh, so few options to go around. But at least with 13 games, we have Plenty of pitching, plenty of hitting, plenty of value to go about our day when building these lineups and breaking it down today, man. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting pitching on the slate. The return of one Christopher Sale, uh, if that's his real name. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't Christopher, like his name Chris or something. Oh, it's Chris um, Sale on DraftKings. Right, so I guess not Christopher. Okay, you're right. A um, lot of interesting names across the board on both sides of the baseball. Let's see. No cores feel. Ugh. I know I've been mentioning that a lot, but I just continue to so, be so, so good. Yeah, it just feels so. The, nothing worse than a 13 game slate with cores because then you're picking through 26 teams and you're like, all Has right. Fit in a course. How um, do yeah. I? Yeah. Like how? Yeah. So uh, this is a great slate. It's a Dallas, uh, Dallas Keiko led slate. Uh, I mean, just. A lot of good here, John. A lot of good on this Friday. On this, on this, uh, on yeah. This well, Friday. we thought that about the last Dallas Keuchel slate, and he goes and shuts out the Diamondbacks. So, well he, well, he shut him out, but like he didn't have any strikeouts. He allowed ten base runners, and he allowed like ten stolen bases as well. No, so, like, I'm going back to the well. I'm just saying, like how tilting that was. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. going all in on the D backs that day. No dice. So yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's just let's just waste no time. Let's just get into it because we have 13 games to talk about. Which means we got a lot of pitching. To break down Corbin, uh, I guess it helps if I would share the screen here. Uh, we got Corbin Burns, uh, we have uh, Blake Snell, uh, Luis Castillo, uh, Andrew Abbott, Charlie Morton, Justin Verlander, Jose Barrios, all up over nine thousand dollars on the slate. Yeah, hard not to love Corbin Burns. I know he didn't look amazing in his last two starts, that's because the strikeouts were down. The White Sox present a big strikeout ceiling. We just saw it the other day with Clark Schmidt. I know Garrett Cole didn't get us the strikeouts, but uh, with Burns, we definitely have that strikeout appeal. You know, we just saw as recently as 720 and 714. There's double-digit strikeout upside in there. So yeah. I love Corbin Burns here. Um, I'm okay getting to Blake Snell. He continues to strike a lot of people out. He continues to not allow any runs, really. Look at these just, walks. It's just the walks. The walks are obviously back to where, like, he doesn't pitch deep into games, and he had seemingly figured that out. And maybe he's just playing too much and will be the show and, yeah. like, you know, not getting enough bullpen work in. But Right um, now the best value to Blake Snell is the fact that the Padres will let him throw 108 pitches. Yes. Right? Like, we're not worried about him coming out at 90 no. pitches to start an inning. They let him go. They just let him throw. So. <laughs> they do. They do let him go. Uh, so I'm okay getting to Snell. Same with Castillo. Um, I don't know. But I like Baltimore well, I said, offense is power right now. They are. They are. And obviously the home run ball bit us again with Luis Castillo. It's all on like a day. It all depends on the day. If you catch Luis Castillo on a day where he's keeping the ball in the yard, he's going to have a great day. And if you catch him on a day where he's not, I mean, look out. You're you're going to get burned. Uh, Andrew Abbott is interesting, although he's coming off his back-to-back -back worst two starts against Washington and the we Cubs. We talked about this, right? I mean, the, yeah. the fan graph numbers for Andrew Abbott were not good. No. He was pitching through some pretty bad number projections there yep. for a while because he was missing bats. You got him against two teams that don't really strike out. They put the ball in play on them. They're scoring. Now you have Pittsburgh here who they, they actually put some runs up on the Braves pitching staff in their last series here. Um, I'm not calling them a, a great offense by any sense of the imagination here, but you know, they got the freed, they got the elder in back to back starts here, putting up some runs. So, you know, where does that leave Abbott at 98? If once again, you go look at fan graphs and the numbers don't look great for him when it comes to expected DRA, you know, fit X fit those numbers. Um, Abbott's probably last <laughs> on this, uh, in this tier. Cause I think it's, you like, like, I like Charlie Morton in this spot, even though he's been struggling a little bit. The Mets offense outside of Pete Alonso and, and 
Francisco yeah. Lindor has been struggling a lot. Yeah. Uh, Kion Berla- and Kyle Hendricks have shut down the, uh, yeah, for the most part, I mean, the Mets loss. Other than Alonzo. It's just been Alonzo. He's right. had like four four home runs in his last four games, five home runs in his last four games. Uh, Verlander is interesting, but the Angels have had shown a lot of thump. And then I know Berrios has been good, but like, do we want to attack the Cubs offense? Eh. It's really like, for me, it's probably Corbin Burns and then everybody, like on a tier by himself and then everybody else. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, the way I, I, I kind of approach this myself here, I like Corbin Burns and then I don't know if I'm really using anybody else in this group. I mean, I, I, you know, Morton, we mentioned the Morton recent numbers, but his numbers, two starts against the Mets have been terrible. Eight earned in 10 innings um, against them. And I have questions about pretty much everybody else in that tier. So I kind of pop sure. myself down maybe into the next grouping uh, of players here. Mr. Lance Lynn's on this slate. He's home against Colorado. Michael yep. Kopech gets Milwaukee at home. Detmer's on the road against Houston. John Gray gets San Francisco on the road. Chris Sale does make his return against Detroit. Gibson against Seattle, Scooble against Boston, um, Sanchez here against Minnesota maybe is a little interesting. Oviedo's been pitching really well at seven K, so I think there's a, a case for like you pay up for Burns and then find your mid tier play. Yeah, Lynn's actually pretty great here against Colorado. I like that quite a bit. We just have to worry about uh, Nolan Stop Jones, Ryan. Home runs, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. you know, that's uh, obviously Nolan that's Jones. Not you know, Nolan Jones is taking him deep at least once. Or McMahon, or both. But it, if we, if they're two solo shots, and he has yeah. nine Ks, right? Like it's yeah. it's a uh, uh, he'll have a good start. He still um, listen, He gave up three home runs to the the A's. They were all solo shots. He still came out with twenty four fans. And he's he's another one. Even though he's now pitching for the Dodgers, 93, 96 pitches. So like still like a little less of a leash than leash as we've seen Dave Roberts give other guys. Yeah. Um, I. Probably can't get to Kopech. He had a no hitter going, and then like suddenly four walks and three hits and two runs, and he still only has fourteen or fourteen yeah. fantasy points. Detmer's, you know, I am like high in Detmer <laughs> strikeout ceiling. Uh, he really let us down in his last start, yeah. and not Houston's doing that tough, against Yeah, Houston. Houston's a tough offense. Definitely some some mild interest in John Gray, although he's been. I mean, he's much been one of the worse. worst pitchers in baseball for a while. So yeah, San Francisco is also. Pretty bad on the flip side. Yeah. I think what's really intriguing, I'm not going to get the sale because the pitch count. He only threw 53 pitches in yeah. his last rehab, so, like, I just can't do it. I do think the other side is a little interesting because yeah. we've talked about it a lot with Boston, and I know Devers hits lefties well, and Yoshida's been fine. The lineup is just riddled with lefties, and I know Trevor Story being there is obviously, Helps like... a little bit more, yeah. It does help, Um so when Rob like, Ruffsider is your leadoff hitter, you dude, know I mean? yeah, I mean that's like not overly concerning. And Scubel, dude, other than that Miami start, the strikeouts the last couple games: six against Tampa, over five and a third, nine against San Francisco. Listen, Cole Reagan's just right. beat Boston, struck out eleven. Right. So I mean, Scubel, I think a more talented Life. starting yeah. pitcher than Cole Reagan's is no no offense there, sir. So uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Uh, but as I said, I, I think Sanchez is pretty interesting here. Um, yep. Yeah, tough game against Kansas City, but he who hasn't had a tough game against Kansas City lately, uh, the way that they've been hitting. So you got him against Minnesota, and we have a lefty here against Minnesota. And what's Minnesota's lineup? Largely left-handed bats. Yep. So I think Sanchez here is actually a pretty interesting play at 72, especially since, I mean, we're attacking Dallas Keuchel. So, I mean, we got a good spot here for a win, I think, for Sanchez at $7,200. And then, as I mentioned, uh, Oviedo then unreal here, a blip against the Angels. Um, but really, since the, you know, the beginning of July, San Francisco seven innings, one run, San Diego six innings, one run, Detroit seven innings, one run, Milwaukee seven shutout. I, you know, if that offense is coming alive, and we're not in on Abbott today. I mean, Oviedo's really coming through, and we played him for a little bit at stretches this year. He's been just been up and down, but right now, he's one of the hotter pitchers in all of baseball. Yeah, the only concern with Oviedo is the walks and then the left-handed the left-handed bats but sure. um as long as he's keeping the ball in the yard which he's done in the last three starts there shouldn't be he should have another good start here so I'm with you I think um we don't really need to go much further down either because it gets super ugly after oh, you're that. not gonna see if Austin Gomber can repeat his six shutout inning performance 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look Bruno. at this. You know, look, that's a combo, man. Six to start out, six to six shut out. Yep. Um, against like two back to back San Diego, St. Louis, too. Um, <laughs> I would maybe take a shot on Paul Blackburn at 69. He's been pretty yeah. good. Nice uh, last two starts, but. Um, don't really need to do it when you play OVA. Yeah, so. there's nothing else down here. I would I would a thousand percent agree with you. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't touch uh, much. Uh, looks like we'll be playing some Kansas City again though, and a win right on the mound for the Cardinals here. Uh, let's move on over to the uh, the hitter position here. Uh, again, there's plenty of hitter uh, pitchers we like to target. So offensively, where are you looking to go when we're spending up here, James? I mean, the Braves are going to stand out right away. Tyler McGill has not been any good this year. Made his return to the major leagues two months after being sent down. Four and two-thirds, nine hits, five earned, two home runs. And now has to go against Matt Olson, who homered on Thursday for the uh, 40th time of the year. Uh, he has to go up against Austin Riley, who's been on fire lately. Plus, uh, Ozzie Albies, who's hitting right-handed pitching almost as... Not as well as he's hitting left-handed pitching, but he's been really, really good in pretty much every category. So right off the bat, it's going to be really hard to afford those three guys, but the yeah. three Braves right off rip stand out a lot. Um, how about some Nolan Arenado uh, against, you know, again, Kansas City going to go with the opener strategy with Angel Zerpa, but depending on how long they go with Zerpa, he's pitched three innings, two outings ago. If he is in the game for an extended period of time, that means mul maybe multiple bats for no Nolan Arenado against a lefty. Uh, so I like Arenado quite a bit. Um, I'm okay playing Harper against Keuchel. Keuchel stinks, and I'm willing to test the that theory with any split, righty or lefty. Uh, what's your take on just playing Pete Alonso right now while he's hot? I know it's Charlie Morton, but this guy has – He's hitting so many home runs. Yeah, he's a one-off um, play for me. That's yeah. fine. I'm not looking to play Mets, but I'll play Pete Alonso at this point. Same. Um, and if you want to go to Baltimore, as you mentioned, against Luis Castillo, Adley Rutschman now homers in two of his last three games. Mm -hmm. He has four double-digit fantasy point outings in his last five. Yeah. So if you want to uh, spend up at catcher, Rutschman, and then Trey Turner, 5,200. Think it's a good yeah, well. again, there's a lot, a lot of great spend ups. You know, again, across the board because there's so many games on today, you can really go in any direction. It's like find your stack, find your build. Yeah, like Bobby Witt against Wainwright. Like I'll have, pro I'll definitely be having some Bobby Witt against Wainwright because I'm going to go down again and go play Michael Massey, um, who hopefully they've. Where's Massey's? Did they move his position on me? Second base, three K. So like, yep, still far too cheap. At home, going up against Adam Wainwright, like sign me up there for some value. Um, you know, you look at at first base and some spots we'll, we, that we can take a, a look at for some value. You know, maybe maybe Brandon Belt, Ryan O'Hearn's three K. Um, you know, Verlander gets Mustakis. You know, if you think that the Angels' offense can still do some power, um, definitely a lot of options here for value. Um, notably, where are you looking to go for some value in the infield? Um, so I'm going to go back to catcher and go to Wilson, uh, Wilson Contreras, $3,500. He's hit lefties extremely well this year. He's at righties extremely well this year as well. Um, so I'd go there first base, Brandon belt, 3,200. Yep. It's Javier Assad. You know, we know belt has the home run upside. Uh, we're looking for, you mentioned Massey already. Um, I keep telling you. And it keeps coming through. And, John, now we do not have to decide on whether to play Massey or Bryce Terang because Bryce Terang now also has shortstop eligibility, second yeah. and shortstop, hitting 379 over his last 10, um, hits in all but one game. He's, again, he's the guy who can steal bases and hit for a little pop, too. And he gets Michael Kopech, and I'm more likely to stack Brewers than I am use Michael Kopech. So, uh Bryce Durang is probably going to head into the slate as my, if not my favorite value, one of right at the top of the list. So not Pablo Reyes? Not Pablo Reyes is in your favorite value on the slate? Three <laughs> hits and two of the last three, $2,600? Yeah. Uh, finally he, gave him and Story dual eligibility so they can both play second short. So good. Uh, good. You, can, you can pick it out there. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Again, There's I think because there's it's such a large slate, there's a lot of different ways to go. 
uh, when it comes to value. Tommy Edmond against a lefty, you know, is is one of our favorite spots to uh, attack here as well. Um, great numbers for him. Uh, you know, if you wanted to go and get some more of that cheap cards, um, can can fit into some some lineup builds. You know, has that dual position eligibility that we're looking for uh, there as well. Let's move on over to the outfield position. Um, guys are up at the top. We know about them. 6,700 Acuna, 66 Otani, Mookie versus lefty with that dual positional eligibility as well. Um, but we haven't shied away from Jordan or Tucker against lefties, even though Detmers is on the mound here. Uh, Yellick gets Kopech. Soto gets Ryan Nelson, who has ridiculously bad numbers against left-handed hitters here. So uh, again, as we always kind of say with these top price outfielders, like find your stack, find your build, and just plug in the best hitters on the team. Yeah, I got nothing negative to or nothing negative against Tucker or Alvarez. And I Detmers has not been great against um lefties either. So you could definitely get to some Houston guys here. Um Yelich, I love against Kopech. I'm gonna be targeting uh Michael Kopech, targeting against Michael Kopech quite often here. Um I love that. Under like 5K, things are get a little interesting. Like Castellanos, who you pointed out on Thursday's podcast after the double dong, and now is coming, you know, back to life. He gets um, a matchup against Dallas Keuchel. And did I skip over uh, Schwarber 51? Like Schwarber Castellanos. Philly's a really expensive stack, but you could play either of them. Schwarber when he's homering and. When he's going yeah. good, you can play him against anybody. He's hit three I mean, runs. Against Keiko, right? And Alec Bohm and Stott. And yep. Alec, yeah. Alec Bohm for sure, right? Dude, Alec, yeah. Yes, 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 for sure. Guys, that we can go uh, there. Because, again, Philly, rather lefty-ish heavy, but definitely have guys that can do damage uh, against left-sided pitchers there as well. So uh, I'm with you, 100%. Uh, moving down the list, Nick Castellanos, another one at $4,800. Um can can go there. You want to go new bargain? Serpa could could run that off. He's on there. Merrifield he's off for them. Sal Freelick keeps hitting up to forty five hundred dollars now though. Big big price bump uh, for our guy here. So uh, maybe a little tough. You mentioned lefties against Oviedo. Friedel forty five hundred bucks. Um, uh, Michael Harris forty four still really yeah. cheap um, for what his production's yeah. been lately. Nolan Jones we mentioned forty one. Um, so some good four K outfielders here. Yeah, like. I like all those guys. If you're not playing Scooble, Duvall always has power upside from the right side. He just hasn't been the same since his IL stint, which is unfortunate. Two slow bases for a story the other day. When does Sedmo come back? For, he's in fourth rehab game on uh, Tuesday so, or Wednesday. So Maybe. Uh, I mean, they've Soon? been this good. They've been this good in winning the division without Cedric Mullins, you know? Not that yeah. he was having like the most amazing season, but just makes you think like how how good they are at full strength. I agree, hundred um, percent. Under four K guys, uh, you could go Lourdes here against Snell because he's just so wild. Yep. Um, Rosario, you mentioned lefties against Berrios and Hap um, and Talkman, all there as well. Um, I mean, like if you're not playing. John Gray, you mentioned that he's been so bad. I know it's in San Francisco. Like, Conforto's $3,800, you know. Yeah. Um, Sable, 36 Jack Peterson, 4 k Like, you could get to one or two of those San Francisco outfielders, too. Sure, sure, sure. Um, let's see. Other, let's see if we got any, like, true values. Melendez, keep rocking him out. Double dong the other yeah. day, 3300 for sure. Um, Ruff Snyder, you know, will probably lead off. You have Walker against Zerpa down here. Uh, Kike, you've talked about how good he's been since going back to the Dodgers. He gets Gombert 3K, could be good value yep. exposure to the Dodgers lineup there mm -hmm. as well. Um, Waters, I think Waters actually hits righties better than lefties, if I remember. He's a switch hitter, but I think he's better from the left side of the plate. I, so I, looked, at his, I looked at his numbers against uh. For the Wednesday, uh, Thursday slate when Paxson was on the mound, um, he's he's a much better hitter against righties. So if you want to go Drew Waters, who's actually again hitting for some power, has speed, um, 
you know, I, I think Waters again get a little bit more of that exposure to the to the Royals here. Uh, feels pretty good to me. Uh, any other guys under three K for you? Um, I mean, if uh, Henry Davis gets Andrew Rabbit, Connor sure. Joe is three K as well. Connor Joe let off the other day against a lefty. Homer's in two of his last three games that he started. I think both those guys are um, in play. Like they've been like shuffling around their leadoff hitters and stuff, but I, I do think we could see Connor Joe back in the leadoff hole. Especially if Habit's going to continue to show, I'm, I'm okay getting this in Pittsburgh. I mean, we like the pitcher, right? So we All need right. their, their offense to score runs for that pitcher. Um, anything else like really, really cheap? Um, I don't see anything that's like free, John. I don't know if you see anything. Different. No, not really. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go build a lineup then. Uh, let's go up at pitching here. I think we'll plug Corbin Burns in, and then uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Probably yeah, Oviedo, I mean, right? Oviedo or Sanchez. Which one do you like? Better? Oh yeah. Um, I don't care. I like them both. Uh, truthfully, whatever. Okay. I feel a little better about Sanchez. Okay. Than Oviedo. Okay. Um, catcher, you like Contreras? I'm in there. That's fine by me. Um, first base, that we want to rock. I mean, mm, Braves look really good. Alec Bohm, if we wanted to play Phillies, 4,700. Let's, let's see. Let's see if we can figure out the Braves situation. So we want – probably going to have to play Massey. Terang at short, we could too. Or we could do, we could do Terang instead maybe, or both. We could play, We could technically play them both. Massey. Because, I mean, what's his name? He's been so bad. Um, yeah. Miguel. He has been bad. Um, all right. Do we want Riley or Acuna? Mm, probably Ronald, but if you – if it – oof. Is he, I mean, he is not – he's not cheap, but we have – I know. Maybe we can play Jake Myers at 25. Could we do something where we're or playing? Waters was 27, right? Waters was, yeah, 27. Could we do, um, instead of doing Acuna, what's the look if it, we do Harris, Riley? Even though Michael Harris is just progressively getting more expensive. 2,500, which we just had with Jake Myers. We can also he go got, off. We can also go off Contreras and go a cheaper catcher play here. Um, I think Myers got. No, he's playing. Um, did he get sent down? No, no, no. We're good. Yeah. Um, we, can, we can go Andy against Babbitt. Yeah, we could. Or gives or us a one five hundred dollar outfielder. Um. Thirty-five hundred dollars. Yep. Uh, Melendez. Yep. Works. So, example lineup for everybody there uh, going out again. Uh, Corbin Burns. Uh, we got Sanchez here for the uh, Phillies. Uh, Matt Olson, Michael Massey, Austin Riley, Bryce Terang, Michael Harris, Drew Waters, and MJ Melendez, giving us some Royals against Wainwright. Gives us three Braves here uh, going up against McGill. Uh, punt with Andy uh, Rodriguez at catcher. Uh, just again, 13 games. We'll have the full playbook out. We'll, of course, James and I will be back live 5 o'clock Eastern time. So if you have any questions, you can get us in the Discord. You can find us on Twitter. The Twitter handles that are showing right there. And we will catch you all later. Good luck.